Hello everyone, welcome to round 4. We are taking the beating today. We are being taken the beating. We lost to Jaunt. We lost to... What did we lose to? <laughs> I guess I just erased it from my memory. What did we actually lose to? Yeah, this was Jaunt. This was... Ah yeah, Aldrazi Tron. I mean, turn 3 Tron both games and... I mean, honestly, we just... We've been doing kind of bad and I think... One of the reasons we're doing kind of bad is because our deck is kind of bad. <laughs> I, this is what I will be running after this league. I'm going to run another league with Monogreen. Um, I think I've been undervaluing Ancient Sinnings lately. I think this is a great card. I think I've been overvaluing Jan Overborn. I think this is not a great card on its own so much. And I've been drawing it a lot. And yeah, I just think this setup is, is good. Maybe we'd be even thinking about adding a third Crystal and Giant instead of these two overs here. But in general, this is kind of a very similar to a list that I had a lot of success with when band control was a thing. And I don't think that there is a main, like, I've been thinking too much about changing it. Well, you know, having a consistent mana base with eight forest, four Duxel Citadels is probably still the best way to, to win, you know, to win games. So, yeah. And the sideboard, the only change is the gem razor the, to the, for the nature's claims. And I think this is just, it's just better. But yeah, that's what I would run. The damping spheres are for the, for the Tron matchup. So, still Xenon 3, um, I'm gonna play it out, you know, like, it's always a good experience. I mean, unless I lose the next game, then I'm gonna pop. From the game, we, st we have some chests we can open later on, if we want to. I still have a ton of points, so I'm not worried about that. I would like to, what is this? Oh. You need 40 of those. I need, 27 more of these to make it to the mox. There's a preliminary in five hours. I'm actually play this. I probably will play this, but I'm not sure if I will play mono green scales or I will play white green scale. Oh well. I mean I started the video way too early apparently. Oh yeah. We found an opponent. This deck has been feeling amazing and I think I will keep playing it honestly. It's been feeling on the meta, maybe not it's not a better deck in general, but meta wise it looks like the it's a almost better deck right now like there's so much prowess so much thing so many ugh. was it that bad we play january one turn i guess it's actually not bad are we on the play no we're not on the play but i think it's not a bad hand we actually have ravager we get even ancient strings for something later on so oh no throne again the no mulligan throne this is kind of the i oh, know i actually did mulligan okay no no i'm gonna shut up um okay there's nothing we can do so we're just gonna play this and pass worst thing they could i mean i don't know if we're playing against mono green throne or against oh this is mono green throne they're gonna ancient things interesting that they wouldn't oh this is kind of a i don't know if i guess now they have tron like turn four so it's not too bad but i don't know if i would do this quickly I guess I'm gonna get down the ancient the Ingmoth Nexus and next time the Dark Souls Citadel doesn't really matter. Yeah. Of course could have this member, but who cares? Hello chat. People of the chat. It's a rainy day today in Copenhagen. Um No. No. I'll play Ballista and I'm gonna graft onto it. Just getting a 2-2 Ballista. Seems pretty good. Yeah, and I think with four inches things, you, it's kind of like helps you find all the cards that you that you need, basically. Like if you need a Lana Reborn, you have more chances of finding it just because you play four inches things later in the game. So you don't need to load up on Lana Reborn so much. So they have the tower. Um, they basically have Tron next turn and they can have Oblivion Stone next turn, which is scary because they will have eight mana. I don't think I'm gonna commit the Ravager to the battlefield necessarily. I think I'm gonna hit them. I mean, if I find a nozzle, is that good? Kill them? No, I couldn't. I'll try to see if I can find a nozzle of the ancient things. Oh no. We hit them. They go down to 16. I mean, most likely currently is going to be the play by them, but 
we could also play the uh... none of these classes are great worker and module don't do it forest i think i'm just gonna play that over more and pass then we can even gem razor next turn do we want to because the rest is like worker is kind of eh Forest is kind of full. I play it, but not the most exciting turn three, but so now they're gonna look for the mine, and they have will have eight mana next turn, so they can actually uh, oblivion stone us. Not the end of the world if they do. Have a lot of gas left over. Khan, we can also kill. That looks like a really. Whoa. What is that? Ballista? Okay, so they will try to destroy this land. I mean. That's reach. It's bad, but it's not like the end of the world. Another expedition map, three cards in hand. Mm -mm. I could in math. And a rab play a Valista and a Ravager. <sighs> and then play another Ravager next turn. If he attacks, we can actually kill them. If they attack, we can actually kill them. So I'm gonna play Emoth, Ravager, and Ballista, and I'm not, not going to attack, so... I'm probably going to leave the counter over here. Can I kill them though? No, right? There's too many. I need, I need the scales or a nozzle or something. So... Next turn we can play a second Ravager with a... Uh, the Axel Citadel and still have Emoth next to the they tap out. So, I guess the good uh, expedition map for a Ghost Quarter. Even if they... If they could count the creator from the Snaring Bridge or something like this, and then we win. Power plant, so that's four, seven, nine, oof, that's an Olamok. So they exile, what? They exile, why would they exile this? Why would you exile the wall breaker? Did they misclick? Is it why they are zero three as well? Why? I don't understand. Oh. Lol indeed. Actually, it could have gotten a uh, power. But. So... I think we won. By bit your opponent is clicking, okay. Doing a more we won. Mm, so we play hand scales. We didn't need the scales, but whatever, I'll take it. We've been taking some bad beats, so I will enjoy my time not taking them bad beats. So I'll attack with everything. They block only one guy. And still, they were probably dead because we could all. I mean, yeah, they were dead anyway, even if they didn't do this, I guess. 
So they block the Ravager, that's fine, so... Yes. Yeah. Talent skills is one of the few decks in Magic that can actually... I mean, even if they had Lamot like a Ballista or something, we could have still won easily. Yeah, Haldus is one of the few decks that can actually go over the top of Tron. If they don't have a Rune Stone. And I think the, the build that we, you know, the long time ago build, um, I think the claims may be good in this match. I mean, Gem Raises is obviously great. And claims are probably good as well. Giants are probably not good. Things are probably good. Animation models are probably awful. <laughs> and. Thrown again, it's not amazing. Uh, yeah, what can you say? But I mean, if, even if they had, uh, I think we could generate enough counters with both Ravagers. This hand is fine. Has hate. So this hand beats a turn 3 Tron with Damping Sphere. I'm on the draw, that's the only way. That's why I'm playing 3 Damping Spheres now on the sideboard. Because on the draw is kind of the only way to beat that. You know, if we don't, if we don't see a, if we see a forest or something, we don't see another mine. So we're not gonna play that this year turn two. That's good. We're gonna get the scales down. That's a turn. If they don't play another trump piece, there's no point in playing the ramping sphere. So we're gonna play most likely the Animal reborn top and the and the worker. If they play this forest, then then I'm not gonna play it on next. Okay, they could play. They could actually have the on next turn, which means that we actually kind of want to play the the damping sphere. Yeah, I think it's too risky not to. You know. Like if they if they have the Tron and they can't and they minus on a land, then we're so behind already. But here, like, yeah, they had the Tron, right? So good to see that we played around it. That's three mana, that's an oblivion stone, but we can blow it up with a nature's claim, which is very nice. And they kind of blow it up next turn, so we can actually play a worker. Oh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play Danora Born Tap, Engelback. There's no way they can blow this up because it requires five mana. And they only have three. So I'm gonna play Danora Born Tap. Play Hangover Walker. Yeah, I'm gonna move the counters over it. Next turn we can gem razor. Uh, the Oblivion Stone away and attack for 8. Sounds pretty good. But if they have claim for the damping here, that kind of sucks. We still make doctors. So, yeah, they don't make claim. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's second. I don't think that matters right now, so I'm just gonna play. So mutate on here. I'm gonna put it over the top, and then so we put it on top. Kill that. It's a beautiful brilliant stone, by the way. And then we're gonna hit them for eight. And he's actually this kid, we could actually just pump it now, but there's no point. We might as well attack for eight and finish the game fast. Well, we can't. And then we have Nature's Claim to if they play another Oblivion Stone, we can destroy it end of turn. And yeah, all those things, man. 
So that's another tower. I mean, I was so happy to play it on this ship. I mean, maybe they have a trap dust or a car, but there's or a ballista. But I mean, it's a very baby ballista, the two two ballista compared to the eight eight they're facing. So yeah, we could actually claim it, but I don't think on that we have another claim. Um, mm -mm, we're just gonna attack. They are eight eight. And this is not an artifact right now, so it doesn't die to the Mage's claim. So will take 8. Okay, we just block. I mean, if they block, they still take the same damage. I mean, they take maybe 2 less damage if they don't shoot us. But if they shoot us because this has trample, they take the damage anyway. So basically, they just spend 4 mana on shock. They take 4, they go down to 4, I mean they take 8, they go down to 4. I'm gonna play the Scales and leave a Nature's Claim up, yeah. Scales, Worker, leave Nature's Claim up, and we got this. Next turn. Imagine we didn't play a landing for you guys. <laughs> Doing pretty terrible. It's a boss quarter, so they have six mana. They can play uh Wait, all right. Yeah, it's a Ravager. I mean, I don't know what they really do, but I could just play the Ravager. They can go quarter here, so it doesn't. I shouldn't have tapped the two green. Um Wow, they're playing Fock. Sure, play your Fox. <laughs> Brutal. I had never seen Fog by Tron man, that's <laughs> an actual Fock. Not like the normally people name fog when there's a style of fog, but this is actual fog. I didn't even know this guy was legal in modern, like the one mana fog. More armies have been lost in the confusion of the jungle mist than in, than to any battle. Joel Rael, I guess it's an uh, elf, and we win the match. Cool. Now we're one and three. Yeah. I think Sphere is really good in these matchups. And I think uh, Green Tron is kind of an app in an aptic, so. Hmm. So I'm playing the Damping Sphere. But yeah, I, as I was saying, I think this deck is really, really great right now. And I'm thinking I will play an Eternal Witness. Just to have a bit more of a another broken turn 3 play, like a. Play that, or, and I'm thinking of cutting one gear runes just to get more like at the big umph, let's say. On you can still look for these if needed, and then this actually is like a great turn three play. I mean, it's even it's even a great turn to play if you get a like a fetch land back if you don't have more lands. Mm -hmm. And you know, Collected Company, you can get this back, you can even get another Collected Company back, get a combo piece back. And it's a beautiful art. Our lives are etched in our bodies, memories is straight on skin. I don't have any tattoos, but this is pretty cool. We're playing for the Mystic, Mythic 2 and 3. I was also thinking of cutting one on offensive for another scavenging moose, but I really like I actually think this guy was amazing. Then cyborg wise, I don't know about this. May should be a still the third path to exile. And this is a bit not necessary. I was thinking of Hex Drinker as a card. But a bit situational, I guess. Some really good match, some really, sometimes really good, sometimes 
you know, it's a lava dart on dice. Two minute queue. All right, we found a match. We're on the play. We're playing against Mind Candy. Was not cool. We keep this hand. We we'll play Oslo turn one most likely. Because animation model is great against. Uh, I also been think I've been relying a bit too much on animation model like as a crutch. Like I won some games just very easily because I had animation model and then I. And start being a bit too much dependent on it, I think. I mean, it's a good play if we see Tron or something like that. Oh, this looks like some sort of control, so maybe I'll get down the animation module. For the sword, is that's the animation module. I guess I'm gonna go. So. The reason I'm prioritizing getting down the animation module is because um, if you're playing in some sort of control deck, which is Calling Tarn, it could be a control deck. I, did, I don't want to. I don't want it to be countered. And this looks a lot like control deck, right? I mean, if we even kind of find out what what does it have for? Is it Tamor? Playing against Tamor. So we can play Inmouth Nexus, hang a back, make a servo. This looks a lot like those spiral deck. So you can be aggressive. Probably have Nexus of Fate already. Oh, this is nice, allowing us not to get a Ravager counter. I don't think they have a counter right now, so I'm gonna play the King of Nexus. And I'm gonna play the Hangalak. I mean, maybe they do have a counter, like a Ramon or something. But... I think I like the Armor Ravager not being countered next time. Exactly, if they tap out something, somehow we can kill them. It's always nice. Uh, yeah. See, they, they probably had a man leak. That's why they thought about it. But they were like, yeah. Um, I want to go Spiral. So, go Spiral, you know, one of the best cards in Magic. You know? Like, Cantrip the drums at instant speed. So much better than, than Explore, if you think about it. Explore, like, you know, if he had explored, if they had explored last turn, then I'm like, I could have just gone for whatever, right? Oh, Mystic. I like seeing this card. Input to this use. It has a lot of words without Dragon's Astrolabe, but this card is still like really bad. Very cool. Also, kind of ugly. I, I don't like that the cards that are so powerful are kind of not very impressive. I guess this is kind of, fun, kind of nice looking. It's cool. Yes. So next time we actually have an uncountable Ravager, and this would be okay. So we play a Ravager, we have one, two counters on it, three counters on it, or five counters, yeah, that's plenty. We have lethal if they tap out. But if they don't tap out, we don't have lethal. Yeah, one thing I learned is leak, and it's something I'm not very good lately at. I mean, I'm F6 because there's nothing I can do. If they wanna, what could they do? They could. Factor Fiction. Udo. I mean, they have Bolt. That's kind of the only card they really play. If they tap out their bet. And I think they're fetching, so... Spend on 6 billions. I think they're still dead. Now they're dead. 
Alright, so turn 4 kill, turn in the respect the inmot next to Zozolith combination. Yep, so still fine. Cannot make a servo, unfortunately, but we got Doctor and a, got a counter here, so. It's plenty. So, play the this, name Beast. Let's count. One, two, three. Yeah, it's completely dead. And no. So first thing, we the animation model to make it easier for us <laughs> to not to not get bored. So we go here in moth up. It's like when we have a good hand, we're still extremely powerful. But since we've been taking some some bad beats, man. Yeah, this is over. I have a lot of counter. Did I see it? Yep, now I see it. We're gonna move it. Opponent on the scene, playing. Um, 10 more. Do they play count? They play some kind of spells, not a lot though. Damn Razor, do they play any enchantments? They play Wilderness Acclamation, right? The deck. Hey, that's. They play Ram 6. Maybe Veil is worth it. Um, they don't really have, I mean, they have a Braid actually for this, so maybe. I, think I've, I haven't been liking Throne of Gath in this kind of matchups. Seems a bit too much. And Giant, even though they play Bolt, I think Giant could be good. I get, okay, I don't think I need three Gem Razors actually. And. We need to cut a card. I'm not even gonna cut the Ozolith just because this game will go long and I am currently one and three. So I won zero and three last night. I was a bit uh, disappointed. I mean I think a lot I, I drew pretty bad hands and on top of that I, I got fairly bad luck. Which is a, not a good combination if you want to win magic. Like I had fairly bad luck and opponents had like very high luck. Like I think we were like on the lower end of our hands and opponent had very high hands. Also didn't play that good, you know, so in general, oh, they're shocking. I mean, I'm all about them countering my Ozolith there. Uh, I'm gonna play one Ingmod Nexus just because if they want to go... Th so I'm one and three, I just beat Tron. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm super fine with them spending one similar rejection on the extra Ozolith. I mean, they could have an all one, and that could suck. But... So yeah, I am currently one and three, playing for the two three. Yeah, Etron destroyed me basically. I mean, I played these. Okay, I guess if I played it on the Rennie, that I can kill it with a ring mark nexus, which is not the end of the world. And then I, you know, I make them make the place. Yeah, Etron. I mean, I don't think Etron is a bad matchup. I generally beat Etron, but I had this basically I had natural Tron both games, and both games I think turn five they played a five five ballista. So like game one they went Radi Smasher into Thunder Seer into Matter Reshaper into five five walking ballista. So we we were like, okay, okay, that's a counter most likely. That opponent is prepping there. Um, I'm gonna give them the heat. I'm probably gonna pump with the. I'm not hit him. Do I? But I'm just gonna hold it up if I'm not hit him. Um, gonna play. I try to play the Hangabug Walker. If they have a counter, they have a counter, but at least they don't draw two, right? So, so they have like this amazing hand, and the next hand was the same, but with uh, they had a um, 
the cult. They had a, they could still hang out a walker, but I mean, whatever. Shark Typhoon. They could actually Shark Typhoon. Okay, but then we could have killed it. Okay. That's kind of so good, right? You cycle and you make a dude and basically for free. And the dude begs bigger. I mean, if this was always making a 1 1 shark, it still would be a fairly, fairly decent card. But, yeah. So, yeah, that opponent had really, really. Oh, they played Blasm. How greedy can you be with your mana? Did he hit us? No. Another hangabout. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with the Adam worker. They don't have pass, so actually hangout is really really good. If they block we'll pendle hit and and if then they do something to kill it then yeah whatever but nice so I'm gonna play my third in Mod Nexus, I guess, and I'm gonna play a Hangout Walker. Of course, they can blazon away the Ozolith, but it's not actually the end of the world. They get like they time walk themselves. Yeah, so you know, I I think it's running in general an okay matchup. It's just that uh, it's just that it was a. Uh, Kind of bad, and our hands were really awkward. And then against John, I drew. Basically, it's been happening a lot. Okay, let's just counter draw. Mm, we don't have a bit of summer, sadly. I think now that they, I mean, I'm not gonna block anything anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a counter here. I could resolve the Ravager, maybe that was a better play, but yeah. And then the John matchup, I won game one is but easily, more or less. Game two, they just destroyed me. And game three, I just basically only drew lines. That's why I'm thinking I'm gonna go down to 22 lines and only three down over the board. It just feels like I'm running too many lands lately. Even this game, you know, um, five lands is not bad. I mean, it's good to make land drops in this matchup, but. I feel you, you, you can get away with 22 lands and 4 ancient things. Tony has 6 cards in hand. I'm also thinking that if I want to play like 3 relics of progenitors and only 1 graphic cage. Because relic is good on both the jaunt, this kind of matchup, and graveyard matchups. But also a bit worse against uh, Neoform, well, it's really much worse against Neoform and any way, any deck that wants to play like Collected Company. Twenty three with two misses. I mean, yeah, probably if you play Nisa, you want a twenty three. Also, if you play Gem Razor, you want also maybe twenty three. Twenty two should be enough. But what is the thinker, man? Like lack of fiction main main phase. Okay, so they probably they have cryptic for them. I mean, I don't care about force. I don't really care about field of that too much. So I'm gonna give them the, like this. I don't know. I, I'm really bad at this fact of fiction thing. Maybe I should play the card sometime. I think this would be good. Um, I just think I'm gonna go back to do this. Something like this. Like this is kind of my baseline deck that I, I used to have a very high success with on when Band Snowblade was a popular or was legal basically. Just a game. So they take the Cryptic and the Mountain. They feel the dead. Are they dead? I think so. Do they attack me? That'd be fantastic. So let's see. We can play Ravager, animate only. Oh, we can animate only one in Moth Nexus. Um, we can play both Ravager and Pistol and Giant. We can really make a 
Okay, we can play Ravager, sacking must to make it like a 3 3 4 4. Yeah, that's not, not good. So, I'm gonna take the chance to play Crystalline Giant, hit them with both, and then play Ravager turn after. They have a Feel of Death and they have a Cryptic in hand, which they can tap us with, but then we can actually Emoth Nexus them. So. So we go to combat. This guy is really hard for them to deal with. So we always yield this. Mana school. Actually, if we put mana on an email nexus, then they kind of block it. But funny. So we attack with both. Do they block here? I'm just gonna let it go. They don't block here. So they have, what do they have? Okay, they play the field of the dead. They have a forest. Go to 13, nice, and then we play Ravager. Yep, it's a turn. Yeah, you need Gem Razor, but you can also have it on the sideboard. I mean, it's a good card. I, I was the one that put it on the main deck, first person that thought about it. I think. And so they have Cryptic. The thing is, if they Cryptic us. So I think what I'm going to do end of turn, or I, mean, I don't even think I'm going to do it end of turn. But I'm probably just going to sack this. Put a counter over the Crystalline Giant to the Ravager. And um, if they tap us out, then we can kill them with Emoth Nexus because we'll have a counter on the Ozolith. Uh, actually, yeah, I can put the Ozolith here, then sack the rest, yeah. Activate demo after it resolves, yeah, I can do that. Of course they have a... I mean, of course, the, the Emoth would have mana, so then they kind of block it with, with a shark. I love Crystal Giant. I don't know why I stopped playing it, it's so good. Even against this more deck. Look at the amount of pressure this is putting on them. Just the idea that they... Okay, now you have a mana suit. Yeah, you need Gem Razor for Comic Recreation, but you can put it on the sideboard. Maybe you could even play Fortune Razors. Okay, Hour of Promise is a choice by our opponent. They can get one, two, three, four, five. They can get Field and something else. One mana, though. I'm really sure we could activate both in mods. Especially because we could get mana to them. One land, and they don't have... Oh, they put a Cryptic on this. But... Ah, I need to read it. So... Um... Put Force of Negation, Field of that, and... Okay, they actually don't have the Cryptic. <laughs> cool. They make a bunch of dudes. Okay. I can need this Ozolith. So I can activate two Inmouth Nexus and play and play one Ozolith. And actually it's better to put Hang of a Walker counters. So
Just making sure I do this right. You go to combat. I want this to resolve last, and I'm gonna put it here. Now this has lifeling. Okay, so now we. Sack here. I mean, at any time, if they have a ball, they can sack the rest of the field, right? This will, still, this will have Mana's Lifeling now and be a 5 5. We can just attack. Mm -mm -mm. They kind of block this. Is it? So you can't block this because this has manas. It's not a giant. Okay. What a manas on Enigma of Nexus. <laughs> what about that? We block here. I don't know what they could have that would stop us from winning. I mean, only messing up stop us from. I think. Yeah. I thought also this one giant works well into the plan of killing them instead of, yeah. So, I can sack here. I will put the counters over here. I put them here, they can pull this. I wonder why could they have one land that... Maybe there is something, I don't know. I just coin? Or we will roll? Zombies? And of course they can bolt here, but this is still lethal. Oh, they have magmatic scene hole. I did not see that one coming at all. Okay. Rural. I did not play around this. I guess you got me, opponent. The thing is, the mana counter still goes into this, right? So, all right, I guess we got us, opponent. I did not see the, the magmatic sinkhole coming. Um, I guess next turn we can activate the ink mod. I think I just give it to a. To this. So I'll take this, there's not much I mean. Not much point in blocking. 
I guess if I put in the other one, then I win. So I have to think whether I want to play around Bolt or I want to play around Ingma. I mean, I guess now they can blast zone. Yeah, that's so. We can win with the Ravager. Damn it! I did not expect the. Was there something we could have done? Maybe if they have reclamation. They have crumbled to dust. Wow. We can exile our Inmos Nexuses. Huh. Wow. I think they play only one Magmatic Synchro. I think this is still correct to go. Like, maybe there could have been something we could actually we could play around it. We can hit them now. Maybe there could have been a. They also play Crumble Dust. That's good to know. Do they play Gem? I don't think Gem Race is that good. I mean, in the fourth puzzle, lead. And. Brutal. I mean, they probably play like yeah, one magmatic scene call, and I did not, did not think about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, if I put the counters on the other two, then we win. Funnily enough. Because if we, if we put the counters on the other dudes, then they can't. Uh, Fire, it's okay. Ah, oh, this hand. The fuck, man. Comments are great, but we have two green spells we cannot cast. Um, Bale is great, but two green spells. Can we cast it? I think this is just too awkward, man. Okay, this is... Keep, and I'm gonna put a bail back. We play Force of Negation, so they maybe force this. Be brutal. Turn two, we're gonna play the Hanger back. Okay. They could have the same energy ejection. Do I even want to play around it? Yeah, we'll play around it. I'm gonna play around the same energy ejection. Mm hmm. <sighs> It's rather good. I like to play it. Well, with Bale, yes, you know, if you keep. Okay, I'm gonna. This. If we reject, we will. No. Actually, I'm gonna play the skills now, I guess. Hmm, since they didn't have a rejection. I mean, that looks, may look a bit awkward, but I think that's the way. Maybe they have a counter for this. I don't think so. I think this is going to go spiral. And yeah, next turn we'll have Bale. Yeah, there you go. Bail and Ballista and Hand Skill. So we withdraw like a Ravager the turn after we won. So we have two turns to draw a Ravager and then we can win the game. But this deck actually finishes the game quite quickly. Hour of Promise is really strong. Basically making four zombies or more. 
And then with fetch lands they make uh, four zombies with every land, so... Let's see, they drew with Rose Pyro, but they seem to be in rhythm doubt whether they wanna... Maybe force or negate this run on skills. Nice thing is next turn we can we can play the ballista and if they don't counter it we can put counter uh, we can put counters on the hangalack and if they do counter it we have the tail. Oh. Let's fill out that top. I mean they still have four lands, but I mean they could uh Udo. They will be basically if they ramp and ramp, they will be triggering field of their next turn. Opponent <sighs> Mind Candy Man playing for the Brutal 2 3. The one half magmatic sinkhole have saved them. But I guess that the blue deck's life, you know, you just play for that one off. So next time we can play a Ballista, it will be a 2-2, and if they don't do anything, we can put Condos on the Hangalak. And then eventually, draw Ravager, hopefully. Counter Souls Ravager would be nice, kind of draws. But even like playing, like getting a Ravager and having Veil back up. We could even just Veil <laughs> first, and then yeah, we just play the Ravager, and then go for it. And that is the reason I play the hangout first, because this way I can actually tap it to to make, like, we can use our mana, like Ballista, yeah, it's a 2-2. I mean, Ballista it's better to finish the game with, but it's not so good at grinding. Opponent is really thinking, man, they only have, like, 6 minutes left. They were really slow. That's an Udo, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Draw a card, they gain some life. They do everything a card should do and more. So this is a bad explorer because it gains life and uh, it sets up for a 6-6 six, six that draws cards, gains life and ramps. Sort of like a primeval titan that also gains life and draws cards. Not bad. For 4 mana. But they are ways away of casting it, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, again, this card is not doing anything. I don't think they should even be... I mean, they should play one. Seems like this, they're playing this stuff all the time. So, let's do... Let's go... Draw... Forest. That's good draw, I guess. So, we will play... The... Walking Ballista. This allows me to keep up Bale and Pump. Will they ceremoniously reject me? They can feel the dead next turn if they ramp, if they have ramp. Okay, they don't. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna put count here. And. Maybe I actually have a. Hmm. I claim it. That was a bad, a, a bad play. Should have waited. You know what? It's not too bad. But I should have waited. I mean, now we go to combat and we make this Ballista 4 4, which is good. Um. And Ravage is still lethal, so I should have waited. I shouldn't have. Uh, I should have waited for them to tap or to fetch. Like when they're fetching, for example, then I can put the counter on. Five cards in hand by your opponent. I think people are not playing Villainous Acclamation anymore. They're just playing Pillow of Death. That's kind of their end game plan. They kind of bring back Uro. They need one more green source. Maybe they have it, but they can bring back Uro in that regard. But then we draw a Ravager. That's why you also want to play four ancient things. Just the chances of drawing a Ravager go up so much. Okay. 
Opponent. Four minutes. This is like, I mean, it's rare that I'm 10 minutes ahead of my opponent on clock. That's a lot. That's random six, sure. As a line back or passes. They get a line back. Cool. They get this. So they are one line away from, from triggering field. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will go in. Can I, if I put Candace here, it's six, 12, no, it's not enough. So I'm gonna go kill the rain. So we attack mine candy, you attack rain. Oh, no. You attack rain, you attack mine candy. I'm not gonna put counters now to play around the magmatic sinkhole. So we kill the ram, deal one damage to them. I'm gonna put counters at the end of the turn actually. I don't know if they fetch this, I'm probably gonna put counters because then they don't have, yeah, I'm gonna put counters now. Now they don't have a red spell, like a red mana source, so they can't magmatic sinkhole. That's what I should have done with the hangar back last turn. Sometimes. So this is lethal next turn. I don't think they oh they shot. Interesting. Because they're gonna fag of fiction us. And I'm gonna probably bail it if they fag or fiction. Oh, destroy target artifact. Interesting. Okay. Four minutes opponent has. They can Uro. I guess they have double bolt. Yeah. Hey, that's a magmatic sinkhole. Um, Gods. Mm hmm. Mm, doesn't target. I don't know what doesn't target. Do I care about this? I could do an extra card. Other fiction, I think it's, let me see. I don't know if Fagger fiction target. Let's let's get our facts uh, straight, guys. Okay. Uh, an opponent. This says an opponent. It's kind of a random way of putting it. Made a newer card version. Mm, do I care about bailing this? Of course they draw a card, but I can just replay it. I would rather save the veil if they have um, a Admiral's Charm or something like that. I guess they can Uro now, opponent. Green, green, blue, blue. Uro. We can draw a Relic of Progenitus. We could draw Ravager, that'd probably be good. They draw, they gain life, they ramp. They draw. They shot. Kadoot. Funny that they shot. And so many lines, man. Every game. Um, gonna attack them. 
to the right next. Yeah, the braid. So, yeah, so I'm guessing the, the flag of fiction doesn't. So, my plan is to block the Uro with the worker, put the counters over the Imoth. Sure. More dudes. They can put back a bolt, I guess. How great is this mana base? I mean. Cool. They put a braid on top. They'll draw it when they attack with Udo. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we've done we 12 cards and 6 of them were lands again guess I can make them use the braid on this I'll block with this in one axis, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I'll block with the Inmod Nexus and. Where are my outs? Uh, I think I could draw Ravager, maybe. They also run, could run out of time, <laughs> honestly. Not many outs, but I mean. Yeah, I guess this is once you get to this point with Hill of Death and Udo, kind of impossible to win. They can just so much life with Udo. This, I just let me get them done. Um, Ravager doesn't do it. The next time, I guess. Let me show my it could be an out if we had any way of putting counters on things. But we did. All right, we went one and four. Rural. It happens sometimes, it happens. Yeah, I mean, they had the one off Magmatic Sinkhole on game two, which is kind of like, okay. And game three, I mean, I play around Bolt, which they play more of, and then the game three, they just you know, had all the answers as well. I don't know, Bale is not good against them, or I don't know, I'm not even sure what I'm bringing in. Him. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break, and then I will either play another league with these scales. You can tell me on the chat, what do you want? Do you want to play? Uh, mono green scales, white green scales with Heliot, or Jack Moth. Say it. I'll be right back.
Das habe ich nicht gemacht. Das ist Alright. Okay, okay. The verdict seems to be We, there's like white green scales and scales no yakmoth next time mate so i think it's like a really good like it's really cool um yeah and the only thing i would like to feed in is a second scan jingus and maybe an offensa on the main deck and maybe an offensa needs to go for because i think scan jingus is actually really good in a lot of matchups um, I'm only playing two scales here because I think two, like this deck has a problem of not being able to generate enough cards. Oh yeah, I'll just try it like this. So I make one change. I change the gear runes for an eternal witness, and the sideboard is pretty much the same. I like the MP series versus strong. Um, yeah, this is against combo decks and against prowess decks. This is also against prowess decks. This is against creature decks in general. Night of Autumn is just generally good. This Eternal Witness could be a Night of Autumn, but I kind of like the Eternal Witness, what it can do. Getting back a combo piece. Yeah, I'll play this now. Um, I feel like it. I don't feel like playing... Uh, what's it called? Um, one win, four losses. I haven't taken one of those in a long time. Anyway, welcome YouTube as well to the beautiful Harden Skills with Heliot. Um, I think the, deck, the, the beauty of this deck is that it has a much better prowess matchup than normal mono green, I think. And it on top of that has a way to go over the top of the midrange decks with the combo. And on top of that is pretty good against uh, control because the ranger captain of ears can prevent the opponent from casting anything on your turn. So, yeah. I, the stock version of this that I saw, it, had fi it has top 5 owing, but it 5 owed a few times. He was not playing Gabriel Runes, he was not playing Eternal Witness, he was not playing Arbor Elf, he was not playing Anafenza, and he was playing less Ballistas, and he was playing more Harnet Skills, and more Scanging Moose. And I think that may be a trap, because when you play so many Scales effects, and you don't have enough ways to put counters on things, it becomes a bit like a, a bit rough. Alright, we, we found a game. And these are a lot of work in progress in this list. Mm. As you see, I always like to change things from... I think one of the... If you want to be a grinder like this, like these guys that have like a million wins, you kind of want to be a... This hand is not bad. You can play Arbor Elf turn 1 into Conclave Mentor turn 2. You can even play the Conclave Mentor no matter what. And then Ballista turn 3. I mean, three lands. We play only 20 lands on this deck, so three lands is really good because we have a low chance of drawing more. So, opponent Mulligant, and they are on the first strand play, so probably control. That means our world is also pretty good. Scanning was also will be very good against them. So, I'm just gonna try to next turn get a Conclave Mentor down. Eternal Win is also really great. Conclave like Mentor is basically the scales like uh, 5 to 6, but it's because it can be fun with Collected Company, I decided to maximize on the Conclave Mentor. Okay. <sighs> so I think I'm just gonna play with Foothills and look for a white uh, source. Temple Garden. Maybe mana leak this. Maybe play Aspen Cuddle. Yeah, man. In this sense, we're gonna attack. 
So next turn we have four mana dilo, so we can conclave mentor plus uh plus valista. Or we will draw collective company. I don't like this art so much, like the other one there. I mean, this deck is built with a bit of brain, so we have uh, 30 creatures, so, and tw so basically we have 27 hits that are not Ballista, which is enough to play Collected Company. So, yeah, sometimes you will hit a Ballista, but then you just don't put them to play. But the Ballista is here mostly for, because it's a very good card with Conclave Mentor, and, it's a pre uh, and with hand skills, of course. And it's a combo piece with uh, Heliod. So the Field of Ruin, I mean, not the most scariest. So we'll do White Green, the Conquest Mentor, see they counter it. Then we're gonna. Next turn, I'm gonna play the Woos if I can. I don't see any white sources for opponents, so... Yeah, so even if you have 20... Even if you if you hit a Ballista, normally you can actually... I mean, if the calculation I made was... Like, I use this Hyper Geometric Calculator. Then if you have 60 cards in your deck, 27 hits, sample size is 6, and you want to list 2 dudes, you get, like... So you have a 85% chance of finding two dudes and a 97% chance of finding one. So I mean, I think it's a pretty good uh, deal, especially since some of the dudes just win the game. So they will fill a ruin out of Temple Garden. Sure. We'll get our planes. Of course, from here on out, if we Draw a land and a Heliot, we can get... You can see we can play the Eternal Winners and get a land back, and it's not a bad play at all. Still dead again. Seems to be the control finisher of choice. But this has a control thing, maybe just to scare people into the Ice Fan Cuddle. Okay, it's a land, so... So we have 4-5 mana this turn, so we could play Scavenging Goose and Spike Feeder. Or we can play Scavenging Ooze, hold up mana. I'm gonna start attacking. We can save the Sterna Witness to get whatever. We could play Supreme Verdict next turn, I guess. So maybe we don't wanna to commit too much on the battlefield. Maybe I can just like put counters on the Ballista. See what they do. Alright, I'll get back to it. Do we want lands or do we want... I think the land is kind of nice, honestly. So we shoot them for one. We still have a second Ballista, so... We take the land. Yep. Take the second planes. We take two. So now we can scavenging ooze and yeah, I'm probably gonna scavenging ooze. I'm gonna play this stat actually. Play scavenging ooze. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have played that. This doesn't play around mana leak. Ether guards. Top or bottom? I think it's gonna be uh Top, you use a good card. Then we can untap here. Play second ballista. And the reason I put three ballistas is because of this. I really want to be able to. It's okay, it's okay. We just this is the first this is the first match of this league. Sheldon. We won one and four last league, so we didn't miss much in terms of quality gameplay. We have five, six mana available now, so if we draw Heliot, we can even cast it through a mana leak. 
That's a flooded strand. Oh, that is a memory? No, that's a fairy time raveler. With a minus on here, we can shoot it, so. Mm. One, two, they don't have three. Um. We're drawing the uh, scanning rules. Mm -hmm. uh, F's five mana available, so I can scan Jingo's mentor and hold on a mana, right? So So you go on the fair, you go on them. Play a mentor. Replay the screws. Maybe I have the mana leap for this. Then uh, end of turn, I mean, if they try to get something back to the graveyard, they play a Nuro, we can eat it. And it was really great matchup. Collective Company is also great, but we haven't drawn it. <laughs> this is a pretty man. Very stream. Oh, I thought it was a fetch line actually. Oh. That's an Oboro, Palace in the Cloud. So this can they can just to redo their thing with a I have no creatures to be found. Um I'm gonna take out the path to exile. Oh, there's a Heliot. Hello. They could have a cryptic command. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go to combat first and then play the Heliot. So if they if they tap us or something. If they counter it, we can eternal witness it back. Which is really nice. Just take it. Oh yeah, let's play Helio. Abs and scales. I just think the mana is just kind of awful. But now I think the best is not to do anything. You know, just we... I should have left the green sort of actually. We just ch chill. I mean, then we can just give lifelink to the Ballista later on. You can even eat a gain a life with those by eating a. Also, the combo with the. So there you have this cool. I'll do it in their end step. We win. How to beat a combo deck? Go like a deck like that one, just go over the top of them, I guess. Mm. Two cards I like in this matchup only. Hero runes can be good. The audio champion is not good. <laughs> and. Yeah. My friends are also not the strongest card on its own. Bale is just. 
It's very good though. Is it a little cryptics and stuff? Sometimes I wonder. I think I'm gonna. I think the veil is more for the black matchups. So the reason I waited for their end step is that imagine they had some kind of anything to do. Like they bolt the ballista and response of the lifeling. Um then basically they use the mana for their turn and then or their cards on their turn, and then we can actually uh basically beat them on our turn, right? Because they were at seven anyway. Even so if you don't have scales in play, healing and ballista is lethal as long as you have a two-two ballista. Because then you give lifelink to the ballista, and every time you shoot your opponent, you get a counter on, on the ballista. So you basically just kill them this way. This is, this is a great hand, actually. This is a turn to collect the common. That's the reason I'm playing Arbor Elf. <laughs> so, so that's a, that's a cool thing about that. Mm. The second Heliot. So I'm going to play the Arbor Elf. I mean, they could path it, but whatever. But if you have a scales and then you have a spike feeder, then you can actually make any creature infinitely big with Heliot. So you can make basically all your creatures infinitely big and gain infinite life. It's kind of a nice combo. Yeah. But if you have scales and spike feeder, it, it just you just make all your creatures uh, infinitely big. Wall of Omens. Alright. So now guys we gotta get you gotta get to see the thing in action. Oh, this is a temple garden also. I'm just gonna double card them. So we need to spear sprawl here. And then we're gonna end their answer, we're gonna collect a company. You know, collect a company, and I'm gonna do it under answer to play around force of negation. And if they play a mana, we can then we will resolve a Helio the turn after. And we still we can resolve a Helio and a scanning host, right? So pretty strong. So turn to collect the company is amazing, especially on the play, but on the draw is also right, all right. Now, if they Uro or something, we could easily... Oh, this is Shock. So that means that they have some kind of counter spell. Yeah, Infinite Life is, is really good, of course, but... Infinitely Damage is also kind of nice. What's the end step? See what they do. Chumps Man. So we do this. Do this. So to, to collect the company, not a bad play. Better than Blood Bray Elf in a lot of ways. Then we will collect the company. That's why I put the Arbor Elf and it's so strong. Uh, that could have been also an option, but I like the end step. This way we resolve a Heliod for sure next turn. If they don't, if they counter it. White. Maybe they ran on it. Steel is fine because we have four six mana, so we can collect the company scanning us. Maybe that was actually a good idea to collect the company under our keep to play around, or even in our turn, right? Too. Yeah, okay, they have an ether gas, the arbor elf. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on top because it's not an actually bad card to get off. Of uh, collect the company, honestly. It ain't my back card to have. Why wouldn't they do this on this? I don't know. That's a spike feeder, an arbor elf, and a hero runes. I think spike feeder and arbor elf are the key cards here. Ah, I should probably got him the hero runes, I guess. Here's the camp path now. Okay, that's that. Um, we're gonna play Heliot. Ah, the Spike Feeder. I do like something to eat with this ooze, but I think it's not worth it. So I'll remove a counter. In some life, um, get myself a land. Only a planes, yeah. 
then we can untap here play us and I'm gonna hold on the wooded foothills I could play the Agora, but I like holding on the wooded foothills in case I have a mystic forge a mystic forge uh... alright I forgot the chains You don't have to watch if you want to. I think this deck is actually better than skills right now. Like, than mono green skills. Like, the opponent is in some, under so much pressure. They play priority stream. What do you say to your guy who makes content for you for free? I think empath is in response. Yeah. I could get a. I could exile something. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Oh, it's a Valista. So Valista, of course, is a game-winning play if we get to resolve it. But it's a bit hard to resolve right now mm, we have four five six seven mana so this is enough to get a ballista maybe they have a counter spell but maybe not So I didn't actually cannot attack with that, right? So oh that see what they do. You just take it, man. So funny. Mm, I could give it life lane, make it big. No point. I'm guessing I'm just gonna go ahead and try to win the game. They brought a ceremonial rejection for three ballistas and they actually used it. Good for you, man. So we can actually gain life with the Ooze. And... But no. Yeah, I was okay. That's uh our promise. Cool. Yeah, maybe should not have done it right now. They're tapped out. But I mean, we can draw another ballista. We can draw a uh, ranger captain. We can draw collected company. We can draw many. I'll probably style our own ballista here and make this a four-four with the Heliot, then attack. They don't have five different lands, so they have only four. So they cannot get a double field of the deck. And that tells me they don't have any more answers in their hand, right? So why would they keep... So I get Field of Death plus Mystic Sanctuary. Interesting. Right? What did they get? Field of Death and Mystic Sanctuary. Yeah, so... And I guess we could... They're not witness this back. Yeah, I kind of like this. So we gain alive, and then the healer gets a counter on this. It's big four four. Um. Yeah. All right, so we won. So we play Captain of Eos. Yeah, we could draw the no winners, and that's true. I kind of misplayed, maybe. And we win, but we draw the Ranger Captain and we win. Yeah, easy peasy.
We just drew the card that wins the game in the spot. That, that's the beauty of uh, and normally you cannot do this with uh, with this deck because you don't have Arbor Elf to generate infinity mana, but we have like 9 mana, so we could both Captain of Eos, Ballista for X equals 2, and give it lively. Pretty good. So we're playing against Nogam, Blaine of Full, well, I don't know, not too bad. What is the name? And it's good, is that turn 2 Ballista? I mean turn 2 Heliot. You can see, right? This can be, I mean, I think this is pretty good. I mean, their hands are being very smooth. It lines up very well to what our opponents are doing. Abuses some of the most broken, like, uh, early mana engines in the game. Like, we can heal your turn two. And then from there, I mean, opponent has a hard time. That's green. Oh, that's Arbor Elf. Um, do I want to Ballista this away? Oh, that was low. This they could have a uh, Gilash next turn, I guess, and kill this. Not be so cool. Will not be so cool, opponent. Um, I'm just gonna get the heal it down, I think. We are one and zero in this league. We went one and four last league. <laughs> I think I actually, if this this could be a blue, blood moon deck, so I'm gonna look for my second planes. You know, just to be safe. We're gonna play the Heliot. If they have Pillage, they have Pillage. We also kind of waste a turn doing that. Oh, nothing. Are we playing the mirror? <laughs> nice. So I think I'm just gonna collect the company end of their turn. Ooh. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna collect the company end of their turn, and then we can we can resolve a ballista maybe. So if I have had a scales, of course I could I could uh, play a ballista and give it lifeling. But if we find a conclave mentor, we win. That's weird. I guess I will have a blobberry elf. Uh, red, red, green. That's oh, is that clothes? That's bad. Flush. So we will collect the company response. And now basically, so that's an offense and that's conclave mentor and that's spike feeder. So we can get Psych Feeder and Conclave Mentor, and now we have infinite life and infinite damage. And we won. So this is how it works, right? Yeah. So now we have infinite life and infinite damage. Easy peasy. Turn three kill. So we're playing in Sponza. Um, they get a Blood Moon. I'm guessing this is. Fine with them. I don't know if they're playing um, Elder Karakadoth. Then Path to Exile is better against them. These cards are good. Maybe Scanning is also good. Let's think what is not that good. <laughs> Ballista, we have scales. Ballista is like really great. That's probably better on the play than on the draw. I'm not gonna bring in the paths yet. I'm gonna bring them in case they. No friends, uh, could be a bit. Uh, I guess I can cut the Eternal Witness because they have Clothes. And I guess Knight of Autumn deals with Moon and gains life in case. Hmm. I don't know what to cut, guys. Let's see, guys. Is the Giver any good? I think we can cut it. Celestial Perch, Path to Exile. Should we path? Is Path good? Path better than Night of Autumn. That's okay, let's go like that. We're on the draw this game. Dang. Oh, no, no, we were on the play, in fact. This hand can get double temple garden. I mean, if they kill the Arbor Elf and we don't draw a land, it's for a 
opponent was mulliganing anyway, so. This is also kind of like a risky one. They can put back the Utopia Sprawl and leave. I don't want to go down to seven. The Arbor Elf. So we could be seeing a Pillage in turn two that we would roll. They would rather play the Arbor Elf. Hope to draw land. They have really high chances to draw any land, and actually any land doesn't, so... Village sucks, and I mean, we can lose to Village very easily. Blood Moon... I mean, it's kind of hard to beat turn 2. Oh, they have Season Fire, okay. They can actually go for the... they discard Arbor Elf and Forest. Land? Ugh. Bad. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. Because we can actually play a Conquest Mentor. Yeah, but we are threading very thin here in this game, guys. Um, next turn we have Collected Company. If they don't destroy our line or kill our Arbor Elf. <laughs> what a dream. So, they discarded our land, so we'll probably have a ton of gas. Oh, that's brutal. We'll take this. I mean, we already mulliganed, I don't know. Okay, that's a Temple Garden. So we can play a second Conflict Mentor, and it's not even that bad. So we just go like this. They also missed a land drop, and they discarded the land. So we play a second Conflict Mentor. We had drawn this land just one turn earlier. I think we're gonna attack. I mean, we're not gonna block in anyway. I would like to draw a Heliot, I mean a Heliot a land to be able to play Heliot. I mean they have two pillages, we are. Wait. Double pillage. Do I wanna block this? Nah, it's okay. We are on the zero land plan team. They only play three pillages though, so okay. So I'm just gonna raise them, I guess. I mean, let's go. Yeah. Then you wish you had Darcy Seed on your deck, right? <laughs> okay, final line, that's probably bad for us. That could be a blob elf. Yeah, looks a lot. Matkab experiment, wow. Well, we're not racing that, that's for sure. But we can still gain a few lives if we are lucky. The life total can change. So. It happens. Sometimes you get double pillage and you lose when you have one lander. I'm not too worried about Block Moon, actually. I want the paths, and I think I want them more than the Celestial Porch if they have Madcap Experiment. Night of Autumn is also good against that. I guess I'm gonna cut a Ooze because it's just not that great. I guess we could always pad our own dudes for lands if uh, needed. Brutal, brutal. I mean, I should bring the third Alista back, but it's okay. Last games indeed. Um, yeah, we have Path, we have Collected Company, we have Concord. I mean, we have a nice curve. And the problem is, is this good enough? Against land destruction. As we keep. I'm probably gonna fetch basic. I don't even think I'm gonna fetch on their turn. I'm gonna fetch on my turn because I wanna draw lands. I think I'm gonna fetch a basic planes. Yeah, it'll be a sprawl. I don't want to draw lands, right? So let's not do. Think. Oh, that's good. Could have been bad last turn. Still not bad. Let's 
So we play Agro Elf. I mean, we can we can utilize this. Like we can make this. Uh, we can fetch in response of Pillage. Pillage, Pillage. If they Blood Moon, then we can respond to it, finding a finding a huh, Forest of Plains. Both of them are not here. Okay. Their YouTube PS Pro, okay. Air Bolt. No. Um. I'm gonna draw land, so. Okay. And I have collected company. You could also play. Could also play a Conclave Mentor, uh, Hold on Paths, that's not good. Play Healer and Hold on Paths, that could be good. But now that we can play the, like the company I'm going to, so I say yes. We didn't have Bolt last turn, so they could have a Glorybringer. Is that Glorybringer? I'm gonna probably path it. That's an Agor Elf. The Blubbery Elf. Oh wow. That's a season biomancer. But we, we could actually win next turn, so. Draw cards. They discard Elder Guard and Blubbery Elf. Okay, okay. I'm get behind that. They attack with, the, with this guy. So we will look for. Both the plains and a forest seems a uh, uh, seems we have more ways to find forests than we have plains. So let's go like this. We collect the company. A knight of autumn and ranger captain of years. Good cards, both of them. Um, I could destroy a land to uh, like a Utopia sprawl. I couldn't put it, can't gain life, doesn't seem that good. So I will destroy a Utopia sprawl. Get a ballista. And block here. Can grind you. Okay, so we can. Ah, I wish this was a fourth now. Five mana available, four plus one, five. So we can Conclave Mentor and Gilead. We can Conclave Mentor and Ballista. And hold on path. Probably great. So we'll do that. Mm. White. So we'll do green. Right. So green right again. Conquered mentor. I'm gonna shoot down this uh what with this uh double elf because I don't want them to generate as much mana. Path. I mean, we could attack with the captain, but then they can. Because if we attack with the captain, they can either double block it, then it dies, but then we get rid of two dudes. Or they can just single block it, but then we are. Actually, we have. We then they have good blocks on the way back. Actually, this is also a way to protect our combo. I'm just gonna hold. Also, Heliod is a, is a creature next. Do they have path? Do they play Glorybringer or something like that? 
If they play Madcap Experiment, <laughs> we have Path for it. And then we have uh, 4 6 mana next turn, so we can play Heliod if. Give a uh, Lifeling here. Yeah, Village on the Ballista. Hmm. I'm just gonna shoot one of these now. Got it? Yeah. So I have forest left. Cool. I'm not gonna path anything. Okay. Juliet, Ranger. Hmm. So we could make it. We could play the Ranger, make this a creature, or we could give Life Link. The plan is we can double block it. Because we can still give it lifelink and then put counters over here. And then next turn we have uh, Ranger. See, we need one more land. Hmm. I guess I'm just gonna play the Ranger. Find other Ballista. Hmm. Could attack them. That's the point. I could also like Sakura a Ranger here, but I don't think we need to. No, that's a Elder Gyro, right? But if they play Elder Gyro, they're dead. So. Okay, they're dead, so... They did not realize. The power of Arbor Elf, man. Holy cow. So... Here, what we do... They are tapped out, so we can just do this. I could have done that, but... Then we give five link. Ballista, I guess, boom. Safe targets. I don't think they place Force of Vigor, and they can see. I don't know about you guys, but this is looking pretty good. I mean, this is just like we outgrinded the opponent. Hey, you could have sacked the Ranger Captain. Actually, I haven't played much. You should have sacked the Ranger at the beginning of the turn they pillage your Ballista. It's true, it's true. But it, a Predator Bolt, I guess. That's the two ways. My life is good. I am actually on a week of vacation. That's why I'm uh, streaming in the AM. I think after this game, I'm gonna take a break and go eat foods. And I uh, will come back in the afternoon to. Like more afternoon to continue playing. We're playing against Kado 2 2 2 2 2 2 2. And it's a Healy. And I'm playing this deck. <sighs> I mean, this hand is good if you're playing against Prowess. Did they? Did not, real, did not reveal a companion. I think it's a bit too awkward. Uh, actually, it's not even that bad. We can just, uh, we actually could draw turn one play. And we can, oh, it's a mirror? I mean, the mirror, the 
What are we playing against? Birds of Paradise. Is this like Tecmo? Huh, we have here a uh, one playing beat. So I'm gonna play a Temple Garden. Dawn skills. Dawn skills good card, but no one to draw two main moves. Let's see, maybe Pillage. We have lands. Oh, this looks. This could be the mirror team. Hopefully not. Oh yeah, we're playing against Dragon Medium Jet. This deck is so popular. Yep, they stone rain, so we even take damage, damn it. Damn it. So we will with food heals, pass the turn. Turn two, stone rain or pillager or something is always hard to deal with. Hit the PS Pro. Well, this is not an Arbor Elf. Just green. Oh. Problem is now we can't cast our already champion. Low disc base. Oops. Okay, so I need to just raise some things, I guess. So this this I have to finish. Hmm. This, this for sure. Oh, actually, didn't finish everything then. Anyway, I need to I need to look into this. May I run out of space? <laughs> so we're gonna temple garden here. This game is not looking too good. Mm -hmm. So we could. I don't really want to put the PS Pro on the. I'll put the YouTube PS Pro on the Temple Garden because if they play Plot Moon, that really sucks. But this way we could get an Aria Champion down. Nah, I think that's not worth it. Having another turn to play, like, actually, it's actually pretty nice to have this down. I'm gonna play the Conclave Mentor. Um, it's only bad against both, this line I'm taking. They eat wood food. They eat something else. That's okay. They have four mana, five mana available. They could oh they have six mana available. Well. Mm. We draw land. We could play yeah, I'm just gonna take this. At least that would be a great draw. Um for me that's why I'm gonna play the Ranger Captain actually. Temple Garden. So we can actually get the your Aria Champion down now. <sighs> Choices, man. So we have, if we draw land, ugh. I took the right one, the captain here. We got the Ballista, it will be a 3 3. That's pretty nice. Yep, yep. I'm gonna attack with the Conclave Mentor. Not, we're not logging with it. Yep. So next turn we can actually uh, Aurea Champion plus Walking Ballista. Or if we draw land, we can walk Heliot plus Walking Ballista. And it's just concede. Okay. It started pretty well, but uh, I guess they just drew nothing. Um, I don't like the part. The giver runes. I think an offense was the one thing I got. I think Ballista is fine to keep. I think I also got Eternal Witness, especially if they keep the. I think Scanjin was actually. Okay. Maybe we could have um, either an Offensa or Offensa is too bold. I don't like that. We can have one path. 
Det är ändå bra, men jag är ändå på Edding Magen i fängelset. All right. I mean, we don't do draw. We just lost the game to this, right? One lander. So if we if we play an Arbor Elf and they clutch this land or bolt the Arbor Elf, this is this hand just falls apart. And if we draw another land, it's a good hand, but it's not amazing. So I think we can another one lander. An even worse one lander. I think we just need to mulligan this one as well. I mean, okay, we can keep this one. Um, that's not bad, but we need to put two round, right? So, I guess the forest and the audio champion. On the, sorry, on the conclave mentor. Keep some interaction. This is not good. <laughs> Needless to say, yeah, I mean the first hand was fine, but I mean if we if they have like a bolt, we're just dead. Like if they have bolt, we're dead. <laughs> so it's not a good way to. They also kept seven, right? So it's not a good way to go about it. So actually, whoa, this this looks like a bolt hand, embarrassing one. So okay, that's a good draw. So we can look for a forest, put a utopia sprawl on it. And next turn we can play Heliod. And then with your Aria Champion, every time we we draw a, we play a creature, we put a counter on. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean I think this deck is great. Like especially with the Arbor Elves, I mean well it's been amazing. So we can also Celestial Porch if they play something, but I don't think they play anything that important. Or just a mountain. It would be a sprawl. Okay, that's a wasted turn by them. Mm, yeah, Heliod is gonna be the play. I'm gonna play. Look for the uh, planes because we're playing against. Yeah. Of course, if I knew I would draw the second Heliod, I would have put it back. But that's okay. So next turn, if we draw land, we have Orc Champion plus Celestial Porch, which is kind of nice. And Orient Champion is very hard for them to deal with. They of course can pillage the land, and that's not great. But... We can draw more. Yep. At least we don't take damage, right? It looks like a more heavy Ponza deck than a normal Ponza deck. Oh, sadly. Now I wish I had looked for the Temple Garden, of course. <laughs> yeah, we can still draw lands, you know. If we get this Oryx Champion down, we're... I mean, they may have another removal, like, for lands, so... That'd be brutal. We also only to five. Put a land back, maybe we shouldn't have put a land back. I'm thinking about it. Maybe the healer was a bear. Mangoes of the Moon. Okay. We can we actually have a Celestial Porch for it. I'm um, gonna pass Celestial Porch on their turn, I guess. And then play Audio Champion. Yeah. You know, just in case they have a. Oh, actually, maybe if you Celestial Porch right away, they need to. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Glory Bringer. Both of them cards are very scary. I think I need to exile these. Could also exile these. I mean, this is still like 
a lot of turns clock. I will gain some life with Aria Champion, right? So, get four. Uh, we need to get Temple Garden down. Get the Aria Champion. And then we play Arbor Elf next turn. Hope to draw. Yeah. Uh, we have so few resources on opponent. That's a Blood Moon. Okay. Now we can class this. Now we need a forest, basically. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can give it lifelink. <laughs> My plan was to be able to regain one life and put a counter on it, so next time we can gain two life. Yeah. They have another. Oh, we're pretty much dead with almost anything they flip here. Not Blood Moon. It's looking hard. Well, we end a life. Yes. A counter. Yeah. So they attack for seven. We go down to two. We really would like to draw forest or something. Forest, play this. Cool. Um. So, paths, I mean, they're playing Glorybringer. Maybe we want to bring in another path. Arctic is great. Knights of Autumn are great. They play a lot of, uh, like, land. I mean, I guess Eternal Wind is good because you can get back a land. And I guess I could cut the path. Minimal sideboarding, but Knight of Autumn is really great. Um, we also were in a mulligan to five. We didn't draw a line every time. We, I, to be fair, put down a line that maybe could have, I could have kept. Oh, I mean, it's not bad if we were able to get this in turn two. So, I don't want to go down on cards. It's very grindy this matchup. I think almost for sure we can get this down in turn two. They're mulliganing. That's good for us. So we can get our champion down turn two. That's very hard for them to deal with. And then we can get healed at turn three if they don't do anything. And so we always play the wood foot heals first because it's the basically this can look for planes, but this can't, right? So this is kind of the worst fetch line. Let's see. So the birds. Cool. We will look for a temple garden. It's good to draw a forest actually. So we'll look for the planes here, not you know keeping our life total, keeping our chances of casting our spells high. We play Audio Champion. We have two different hearts of it, I know. It was back before I knew that you know when you're buying a, a card from a bot, you can see how many you have of each. So they could have land destruction, that's kind of been the theme, you know, if you wish. Hey, that's maybe good at Molten Rain, I guess. Oh, Utopia Sprawl. Blood Moon. Okay. Not the end of the world. Hmm. I could play the Windswept Hath and play the Heliot. And attack, I guess. So now every time they play a creature, I can put a counter on this uh, Oryx champion. 
and we have a forest for the for the even if we draw Knight of Autumn, we can we, our collective company we can have five mana available. Blood Barrel is really good, of course. Not Blood Moon. Okay. Uh, yes, I would like to be in alive. Yes, I would like to get counter. Oh, I'm gonna raise that with the, with the Helio Lifeling. Can't really draw from this. We can't cast anything else, so. I'm gonna play the Horizon Gun. We just save this forest just when I. I uh, actually should play a forest in case I draw another forest. Now I can play the Spike Feeder. Okay, another Blobber Elf. Then turn 2, Blood Moon into... Oh, Glorybringer, we can alive. Yes, let's put the counters over here. Another 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. So they're gonna block with the birds. That's a bad draw. <laughs> so I guess it's just put here. Mm-hmm. Maybe they block me here. So we have one forest away from straight up winning the game. This is a race, embarrassing one. If a creature enters the battlefield, we gain one life, which could be... Um... The reason I'm not blocking is because we actually gain more life than we, we prevent from blocking these guys, so... Cutting hand only... Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, that means that we can play Spike Feeder next turn. Always yes, always yield. Here. We in six life. Yes, they can bolt their own bird. Or is that? Hmm. Nice. That was a good play by opponent. Because we can, we can probably, we actually kind of probably need to block the. So if they attack with everything and they are both with dead, so we actually need to block the the blobber elf. This sucks, but oh, they can exert exert it, of course. So yeah, they can exert this, kill the. Do they have both with dead? But... Mm -hmm. Two cards in hand by opponent though. Oh, they have the vault. God damn it, they got us. Both games they had the vault to win the game. Yeah. Basically, yeah, maybe we should of course look for a temple garden instead of a forest. And they had another vault. Well, but the double blood moon really, like, we were not able to cast any of our spells basically. We draw our double trusted spells both times, so. It happens, I guess, we were really close to winning anyway. 
Like, if they didn't have the... St I mean, I guess they had a bolt for it and a stomp, I right? guess, yeah, but... Yep. Here. Just need, like, one more creature to to win. Like, a, yeah. Something... We need a way to deal with these blood moons. It happens. All right, I'll leave it here. We're almost 3-0, but... This game, like uh, game two, we move on to five. Game three, we we, didn't, we cast two spells the whole game, basically. So that's what happens. Anyway, I'll leave the stream here for now. Go make some food and come back later for more streaming, I guess. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I will see you later. Yeah.